idea doesn't need to or it may not uh, uh, be financially viable immediately so some ideas especially the tough ones require uh, a lot of uh, you know support in the form of grants mentorship etc the same goes for incubation so it's um, the building on uh, on the chain is one aspect of it but then you have to market it you have to scale it you have to find customers you have to you know build a sustainable business model and that's what uh, you know our incubation program um, hopes to do and it's really important to keep focus again uh, we're a layer one chain so uh, first we build the layer one chain which is you know almost done now and then these programs are just uh, ensuring that the ecosystem gets built and a thriving one is in place we do have an incentive uh, program for sustainability focused app and you know many of you already have access to it and in a 3 4 days it'll all be publicly available uh, we are thinking about uh, no promises here but uh, negligible if not any uh, uh, gas fee for early adopters but yeah we we do need to have this uh, legally confirmed don't want to promise anything and uh, we have block rewards for early developers of course there is dedicated community support that we have and uh, most importantly we have a dedicated uh, support team for evm porting etc which basically means that if you're a builder on any chain we welcome you with open arms and we will uh, we will basically make sure that uh, everything gets done as uh, as required yeah <clears throat> absolutely um the next question i'm going to pick again around community and ask what is next for the community as the testnet goes live as we head towards the different parts that are there on um the road map um that we had launched earlier last month so what are the yeah. different community activities scheduled so uh, i'm glad that uh, people are actually looking at the road map uh, and uh, holding us uh, you know accountable to it asking questions so i have to say that uh, you know because the project is fairly complex and fairly ambitious in its scope there are many unknown unknowns when it comes to the road map however today i'm happy to report that we are very much on track of uh, meeting all our uh, uh, available de uh, deliverables that we had in mind uh monday is a big day you know you will uh, you will see everything go live documentation available publicly uh then we get on to the feedback collection phase uh, the, the the promise about tokenomics has already been uh you know we delivered and uh, we'll be scheduling uh, uh, sessions to explain the logic of it and how does it protect the investors uh, and so forth and then finally there is uh, you know the road to the main net when you know when things actually go live when there's a thriving ecosystem in place and we have uh, um you know our uh, much awaited token actually start trading so all of these things are uh, scheduled there uh, there were many things to be figured out but today as of now knowing what i know today we are very much uh, on track and uh, it's all possible largely because of the team working inside fire in and out and also our team outside fire which is all of you community members uh supporting us through times that have not been easy for the entire blockchain and crypto space yeah absolutely um pratik can you hear us okay i um, think i speak on behalf of pratik also i'm pretty sure his uh, tech will uh, is giving him some problems that uh we are uh, we are actually quite energized with uh, you know with the road map and where we stand in terms of uh, delivering the tech product building out the ecosystem and communicating our value proposition um the next question i see from our community is around you know joining the test net once it goes live how do people become validators mm -hmm. how do they find out more details about it how can they start actually building on the fire chain um in the public test net yeah so uh, <laughs> one thing absolute basics uh, so the test net will be publicly available that means anyone can join it the documentation will also be available uh, many of you already have access to our documentation but a new improved version will be publicly available the documentation will be you know accessible on the website which has all the details and uh, you might have seen uh, we've been creating a whole bunch of uh, 
videos and tutorials about uh, you know just building on the chain the features etc and all of this is to make sure that the adoption of the test net is as broad as possible and i call it the feedback collection phase but also shaping you know the future of the product so uh, like literally every person listening to the call is most welcome to try it out starting monday and um, if you have any problems accessing the document uh, or you if you've had any problems accessing the document so far those problems are about to end because uh, it will all be accessible through our website and we'll be evangelizing them publicly through our social media channels amas like this one so that uh, you can refer people you can build on it and you you know bring your best uh, dapps businesses ideas onto us so again like really exciting times for the company mm, yeah um are there any um specific documentation around becoming a validator how do people specifically interested in being validators um approach the public main net so oh, it's uh, it's very much part of the same documentation everything is like how to become a validator uh, what does being a validator entail like what does a great validator you know um, you know what features that are we looking for in you know validators like that would be uh, available and yes of course like as we've mentioned like uh, a, a clear commitment to sustainability um and demonstrating that through actions is something that you know we hold dear to us because a community of trusted validators will be a step in the right direction for us as we scale it great um how are we doing on the product um road map that we launched last month are we able to stick to it are there any deviations um how is that coming along uh, the product road map at least uh, you know as i was answering in the previous question um our road to mainnet has been an adventurous one there have been lots of uh, headwinds that we had to navigate from you know geopolitical instability to you know the negative sentiment about blockchain and crypto because of factors obviously beyond any one company's scope but uh, our tech team has uh, you know uh, been working night and day to make it happen and uh, we should actually publish a day in the life of a fire tech team uh, what they work on what are the ups and downs the inside jokes maybe uh, you know my team uh, marketing one anyway plans to do some of those uh, you know sneak peek in the tech team so we should probably get you the flavor sooner than later um it's uh, it's a large passionate team committed to getting this done and um, they have uh, you know they have positively surprised us at, at every step yeah i've uh, i've heard that the tech talks and the updates from the tech team are doing well so maybe a sneak peek into the day of the life will also be quite interesting um the next question is actually about what you briefly alluded to um instability in the world uh, the fire team had put out a note for um just expressing support for all the victims of the earthquake do you have any thoughts on using blockchain um for actually disaster relief for navigating through crises yeah um in fact uh, our team the marketing team has been uh, very proactive in reaching out to our ambassadors in the region and i have to say you know obviously uh, some part of my family is from there so i'm obviously personally quite uh, pained by what's going on in the region um and this earthquake really came at the worst time possible so i hope uh, you know that the uh, things get better and uh, just hope is not enough so we do need to channel a lot of resources now to your question that how can blockchain perhaps address it so when in times of crises there are lots of good organizations doing great fundraising work and collecting a lot of information and resources and sharing it uh, and there are also bad actors who are not able to fulfill the charter and uh, uh the role of blockchain is Black. to make sure that the actual uh intermediaries um um or into people who are actually suffering get the real dollars and it's not spent on that uh, uh, yes. yes i can, hear, can you hear you now oh thank yes. god i've been trying to connect for the past 20 minutes non stop <laughs> oh, hi everyone sorry for the delay <laughs> no no very oh, glad technology. you're here what to do what do
what to do what to do yeah okay. so just like quickly wrapping up the thoughts uh, and then you know uh, pratik should answer more questions because i've answered a whole bunch of them in the first 15 20 sure. minutes but yeah so the role sure. of the blockchain is just like on uh, verifying that the actual recipient is getting the actual help he or she needs and differentiating good actors and bad uh making sure that you know in many of these countries the currency is completely gone so you know for example in in syria as you can imagine the currency the the actual fiat is uh, worthless so we're hoping that uh, uh you know blockchain and its technology even currency crypto can be used as a medium of exchange because at least internationally it has some weightage the local currency has absolutely no weightage internationally the inflation rates are crazy high and after this disaster like it'll become even worse so um, to conclude one making sure that the right actors are getting the right incentives step two uh the fact that uh we fiat currency is gone in many of these places and we hoping crypto enabled exchange uh to facilitate real uh, movement of goods and lastly you know we really hope that the blockchain you know plays the role of a unifier in in this time of adversity over to you pratik yeah absolutely um pratik i'll actually start by asking you the first question i asked utkarsh four days to go for the test net um going public how do you feel about it well i feel pretty stoked to be honest we did the final unit testing uh, just before this call i think it's good i'm actually always a bit scared when <laughs> everything works because that's not how technology should be but uh, thankfully nothing is broken everything is working fine uh we were able to integrate the wallet extension as well uh so you will you will finally have the wallet uh or the extension to be used uh, according to your experiences of metamask and all the other wallets so it's it's a very similar uh, sort of user experience and ui we have designed so i am i'm super super uh, stoked um nervous but in a good way Let's just say that's that's the that's the thought of the hour right now. Yeah, nervous in a good way. Um, I'll actually skip a few questions and come directly to wallet because you talked about it a little. What are the capabilities that the crypto wallet from fire the from fire and how do how does it sort of distinguish with existing um, wallets in the ecosystem? Well, it's a, it's a, first of all I'll correct you there. It's a wallet extension. so we wanted to make sure that things are easy you can just put it put the extension on your chrome and then you'll be able to use it then mobile wallet and everything else can come later but uh, basically this wallet extension is a one stop shop for everything fire uh, as i was uh, also mentioning in the last ama you do not need to switch anything to in the fire ecosystem if you download our wallet which means that you'll be able to use both the chain simultaneously you'll be able to swap the tokens you'll be able to get um you know you'll be able to get all the data that's required you'll be able to connect to apps you'll be able to build the dapps using your wallet as the as as the you know your your key as the authority everything that that uh, you know a wallet has to offer so that uh, you can use the ecosystem of the blockchain well this wallet has is offering so that's that's the crux of of the wallet got it um the next question i see is um why should evm projects port over to fire and if they decide to do so how can they do that well it's very easy uh, since we are fully uh, compatible uh, with evm you you just have to deploy a smart contract uh, initially it was through remix now you can actually we integrated it with our uh, with our uh, front end as well so you will be able to deploy it right from the right from there So, uh, as you normally deploy contract on Ethereum, you'll be able to deploy deploy your application. Now, the why question is, I guess, the more important question here. So, there's three elements there. Number one, the Ethereum ecosystem is really, really large. So, if you deploy your app on Ethereum, it is very difficult, uh, very difficult to you to grab the eyeballs because it's easy to get lost in the plethora of the sea, and the in the in the in in the so many apps that are already there uh, the community building is also a bit more difficult so if you look at any new blockchain right when solana was launched or when polkadot was launched most of the initial apps 
see wallets were already built nft marketplaces were already built on ethereum uh, but phantom still did, did really well because it was the first of its kind in that particular ecosystem so you launching something fire within fire because everybody is looking at fire you will get way more eyeballs i believe as compared to you launching on 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 ethereum then we come to the human uh, and the and the relationship capital side since we are totally hell bent on getting as many projects as possible okay i think prithi got dropped off again we should wait for a couple of more minutes to see if he can join back in Hello. Hey. Yes. Did you lose me again? We did briefly. Oh, how horrible! You were talking about relationships, uh, actually. So we heard the first sentence or so while you were speaking. About so it. yeah. So apart from that, it's like we will give you as much as possible in terms of support and help. Not. Um, we want to make sure that you are able to do what you do best, which is ideation and building. In fact, if you also need help for building, I've. setting aside developers separately for for people who will um, who will come on board and will need help with the ecosystem and development so from the relationship capital side uh, i cannot it cannot take names but there's a project that's building on fire and we because it's very close to what we do um, in our traditional businesses we are he was he's able to get a lot more business development done on his app because we are we are helping out with everything so uh initially especially when you're building on fire in the first 6 months to a year it is a very exciting time for you because you will be getting personal support not just from the founders but from the entire uh ecosystem from from all the advisors to make sure that you have the right people your app gets in front of the right people because building an app is great but it's not enough you need to you need to raise funds you need to get get a community you need to make sure that people actually use your app and all that will be personally supported by fire because let's be honest we are not ethereum right now um so we'll be able to really nurture those projects from and look them from up close so as a relationship side and the human capital side i told you that we'll be will be giving you as much as much support in development as possible in bd as possible also the financial capital side is there where uh, depending on the project you will get your uh, your grants um having said all of this fire is built because of a because of sustainable consensus model so i think that once if and when and i i'm i'll remove the if when it catches on you will be the first builders in the ecosystem and that says something because when we reach where we have to reach i think the dapps on fire will be as big as the the, the famous dapps on ethereum or solana or even better So I think it's an early movers advantage that you have for the next few months building on the testnet. Yeah, absolutely. And like a week or so back, um, we heard from one um, company building on fire, Fitburn. So I think that's a great example of um, the kind of support you will get from the fire ecosystem if you decide to move over. Um, the next question, Pratik, I see for you is. how does one become a part of the fire testnet once it goes public is there any step required can people just start building okay i think we unfortunately lost pratik again let me try to see if we can get him back up on stage hey pratik can you hear me Yeah, Discord is playing funny today. Even I got kicked out, and I was struggling to join. <laughs> yeah, so, we're back now. Yeah, I think Pratik. I was asking Pratik about um, people joining the test net. Let me see if you can hear us and answer that. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, I had, as, as I was explained earlier, there is, I mean, it's publicly available. So we don't necessarily need to, um, you know, now go through any wait list or uh, any particular process that holds people back. Now is the time to uh, really, you know, double down and actually start building. So, yeah, the wait is over. The time to build is now. Uh, let's actually go for it. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions that uh, that the community had? Yeah, the next question was on expected new features um, from Fire in the coming months. What to expect there? Uh, pr Product-wise, uh, there is a lot of ground to cover. Um, you know, we recently made an announcement of the crypto wallet. So um, I would love to share a few details about uh, how the wallet will work, what are the features. Should we do that? Yeah, and I think I see Prateek's back. So Prateek, can you hear us? If you're saying something, you're on mute. If not, then that's just Discord playing games. Yeah, Uttar. All right. So very quickly, I think, broadly, um, the crypto wallet uh, is one really important feature that we will, you know, we'll be announcing and it will be safe and secure wallet that uh, that is designed on providing you a very intuitive experience. So today, one of the biggest challenges in the Web3 and crypto space is that the process of using wallets is clunky. A whole bunch of integration need to happen. And for the user, it's really difficult. And often Pratik talks about the day his mom and dad are probably able to navigate that is the day that he'll consider himself, uh, you know, finally having made something that's intuitive. So that's very much in progress. So our wallet focuses on fulfilling an untapped market, making it mobile first, crypto adopter friendly. And it allows users to purchase, hold and exchange some of the leading cryptocurrencies, as well as manage the much talked about NFT collections all in a single application. You know, what it does is it also leverages some of the industry leading security features because we know <laughs> what all can go wrong when security is compromised. And these features basically will allow that our wallet is intuitive, safe and ready for the future. Most importantly, being mobile friendly and friendly to all age groups. So this is what this is broadly talks about our product methodology as well. How do we make something that is, you know, user first focused on getting an intuitive experience going and how do we make it safe and secure so these are the tenets of all our products and we hold it very uh, dear to us internally in the coming months we will also be uh, you know thinking about new features in the test net including the possibility of multiple transactions pools to support parallel chains a sustainability score based on an esg index and randomized voting to prevent cartelization, uh, you know, thereby ensuring credibility and all of that. Now, in these months, uh, because these are all very big features that take a while to build, our approach will be iterative, which means that we'll be uh, we'll be launching some of these things in a phase wise fashion, uh, according to the roadmap. So please do uh, stay tuned for that. Next question is around um, rewards for participation in the testnet. Uh, what should people yeah. expect? What are the kind of rewards in store? Yeah, we are very, very proud to announce the start of our developer reward program. We plan to allocate, you know, uh, close to a million uh, dollars inspiring developers to discover new opportunities of innovation with the FIRE protocol. Uh, the program offers funding rewards with support to anyone who wants to build on FIRE and also for developers in larger teams. These rewards can easily be claimed from developers who build dApps to larger grants that will be available to highly ambitious people. And again, this was uh, linked to the earlier part of uh, what I had mentioned. We have built the technology, we built the product. Now we want to offer the support that the ecosystem needs to thrive. is on someone is asking how do we deploy a smart contract um i think one oh, that's... way of answering it is that are there any resources educational or otherwise from the fire team that will be available 
Yes, multiple. There already is uh, a demo by our CTO, which talks about uh, how it can do that. And perhaps, uh, you know, the social media team can reshare it so that people can watch it. It's very intuitive. And I think you will like the experience. Am I audible? Hello? Hey, Pratik. Yes, you are. Ah, oh, man, this is so frustrating. <laughs> uh, yeah, how to deploy smart contracts? You'll have uh, the entire documentation along with the test net. So I think, I think it's going to be super easy for you guys since you guys are very smart. Uh, but as Utkarsh was mentioning, we already have a video series and not just smart contracts. Uh, we are planning, uh, actually, we are almost done with the entire video series of 10 separate videos, starting from the, from the, the least complex thing, which is, which is you know deploying a very simple smart contract, moving all the way up to more complex smart contracts. And finally, the 10th video deploying a, something like a DEX or an NFT marketplace or something that's a bit more complex with the front end and everything. So that, that those videos will be launched every two or three days. I think Utkarsh knows uh, better what the timeline is, uh, starting from the testnet itself. So the questions that we had received, um, I'll sort of leave you both with asking about how are you sort of preparing for the next week and the test net um, going public? And also just about the tokenomics, I think uh, that expected that is expected to launch soon. Um, how are you feeling about that? Is there any any thoughts that you'd like to share with our community members? Hello? Yes, Pratik, we can hear you. Ah, okay. I think I, I heard you like just a little bit, but I think the question, the question is about is it about sharing the thoughts on what we want to do with the test net? Could you just, repeat it? I'd say it is a little no, and also yeah. tokenomics. Um, we are expecting to launch tokenomics soon. So, anything on that? Yeah, I think the tokenomics will be launched, I think, later today or tomorrow. Um, uh, the updated version. Uh, basically, the what we have done is that we have had a, a bit more of coins uh this is again like you guys understand the space is mostly for a psychological uh, on a psychological ground psychological perspective where the coin is going to be a bit more cheap but of course the ratio of the coins that everybody is going to receive is going to be exactly the same perfect uh, unfortunately i see pd getting dropped off again um, so I will take this opportunity to thank you all on behalf of Utkarsh and Pratik. Um, next week is super exciting for us as a team. And I hope that all of you join in, try out the FIRE testnet um, and consider building on FIRE. We have, like Pratik and Utkarsh mentioned, a lot of really exciting programs, rewards, incentives, support, everything that you can think of for people who decide to join FIRE early and support the community and the larger ecosystem in the early days. Um, details and more specific information on the rewards, on how to build on FIRE, documentation, video, all of it will be available on all our social media. You can reach out to us on the Discord server itself, on our Telegram groups, or honestly, any social media handles. And our team will make sure you have all the information you need to get started. What we're really looking forward to is seeing exciting new projects coming from all of you. Um, and seeing them being built on fire. Once again, thank you. And we will see you next week.